Hi, I'm Joelle from Salt Software. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to use a coding scheme to code a transcript for disfluencies. So it's a great way to get kind of double use out of your language sample if there are fluency concerns and you want to look at that in, as part of your comprehensive eval. So these codes can be applied to any type of language sample. And we'll go ahead and get started. Um, what we like to do is use the code list that makes it a little bit faster to insert the codes. So I'm going to go ahead and click on edit, insert code, and then there's a predefined list. So you can see down at the bottom there's error codes and fluency codes. So I'm going to select fluency codes. You'll notice that all of these codes start with FL. So in order to be considered a fluency code, it has to be FL. Um, we have different levels of codes here. So FL is unspecified, so just any sort of disfluency. Um, the R, the P, and the B for repetition, prolongation, block. And then I've added these last two. So that's a repetition of a sound and a repetition of a syllable, which we'll get to later on. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. And then I have this dialog box here. You'll notice all the codes are listed here, and then you can select the different position. Um, you can have it at the cursor, insert the code, or have Salt put it at the beginning or end of the word or utterance. Okay, so for the sake of this video, I just have a contrived language sample to demonstrate the various levels of coding. Um, the first one, what we'll do is we're just gonna say that we um, just want to know how many disfluencies. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that unspecified disfluency code. And I'm going to double click there and it's going to insert it at the end of the word. So somewhere in the word mom, there was a disfluency and I can do the same here, the cursor. Um, and then let's say you might also just be interested in looking at how many utterances contain disfluencies. So I can just change the position to the end of the utterance and it'll put that at the end of the utterance of the line where my cursor is. And we'll double click on the code. So that's kind of the tier one first level, just very basic coding. That's just a very quick, fast thing to do. And again, it's great for getting baseline data and then you can go in and take another language sample and track and see if those numbers of disfluencies decrease. If we wanna do a little bit more detailed um, coding, we can certainly do that. Um, the next one we'll go through our repetitions. So if we're going to add this code, it's the position of the code is important. That's um, meaningful. So I went ahead and inserted the fluency repetition. That's meaning that there is some repetition on the first sound of that word. So somewhere in that B at the sound or syllable level. You can also feel free to insert this code in the middle of words. So this one, there was a, disflu um, a disfluency repetition on the N or that N syllable in banana. Um, and keep in mind too, if you have a disfluency after or on the bound morpheme, you can just go ahead and insert the code there too as well without losing that bound morpheme. Okay, our next example, um, is adding the number of repetitions. So I'm gonna insert the code here and I'm gonna do repetition. And then I'm going to put a four here. So what this is meaning is that the initial sound on the word boy was repeated four times. If I go ahead and insert that code at the end of the word, um, it means that the word was repeated. So maybe they said boy twice. So we're going to do a count. So that's another level of coding if you want to include the number of repetitions. Um, another level is to insert um, the sound versus the syllable. So in this one it's banana. So that N sound was repeated. And here um, banana, the na part right there, uh, the syllable was repeated. If you want to go even further, you can insert the number of times that the sound was repeated or the syllable. So again, there's just multiple levels of coding depending on how specific you want to get. The next one that we're going to code for um, is prolongations. So um, again, FLP. So what this is meaning 
is that there was a prolongation at the beginning of the word. I can also put the prolongation code in the middle of the word or on that bound morpheme. And then we can also, another level of coding, insert the duration. So how long did that prolongation um, on the end sound here last? So we can say it was a three second prolongation or a two second, and this can go again anywhere where you're inserting that code. And then the last code um, for fluency is blocking, so a silent block. So um, on this one, we can we'll take that one out. Um, maybe they have a silent block on, you know, in the middle of the word is, maybe it's right in the middle of the word there. We can insert that code. Whoop, let's go back here. Let's put the cursor there. Okay, so um, they say it, and then there's a silent block before they get the S sound out. Or it can be um, a silent block in the middle of the word funny, for example. And then the next level of coding is to time the duration. Again, if you're interested in that level, you can go ahead and insert the time that it lasted. So that's kind of the rundown of the coding scheme. Um, another thing that the SALT program offers is concomitant behaviors. And if you want to mark those, you can go into the edit menu, insert template, template and fluency concomitant behaviors. This is a very just kind of gross level um, analysis if you want to mark um, any of those secondary behaviors. So vocal quality, grimaces, eye movement, distracting sounds, or movement of the extremities. And basically we just use a zero to three scale. Zero is does not occur. Uh, one is a low frequency, two medium, and three high. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just insert some numbers. They had normal vocal quality, not have a facial grimace or eye movement, and maybe they had two distracting sounds, in, or two for distracting sounds of medium, amount um, and then some movement of the extremities so low frequency so now that we have this transcript full of these fluency codes we can bring up the report um, in salt 20 what i would recommend is going into the analyze menu and going under codes the fluency codes and behaviors okay oh and i have an error it will give you that i missed the period Okay, so we'll go ahead. Salt likes you to have all of your errors fixed. Um, bring that up again. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select the first speaker. I like to do total utterances. Um, so if there are unintelligible segments, that's okay. Um, and the main body and mazes, if you have mazes in your transcript. Okay, so then what you have is this report. And this can be really helpful if you're trying to kind of figure out which type of disfluency to target in therapy, um, get some good baseline data on the duration of blocks or prolongations. So as you can see, you can kind of look for patterns in this contrived sample. There were nine um, instances of repetition. So maybe that's something we want to target in therapy. Um, and then we did have that utterance level fluency code. Remember, if you're just marking the number of utterances, um, that's what you would look for. And then it includes the concomitant behaviors. So that's just a great report to summarize. And I will point out that under the help menu, if you want more information under resources, transcript conventions, um, fluency codes, there is a lot of more detail on how to code a transcript. Hopefully this helped you consider using SALT to code for disfluencies. Thanks for watching.